Yeah. So from your personal dealings with the president, uh, what kind of person is he? Uh, maybe you could speak to uh, his character a little bit. He has uh, two uh, aspects of in his personality. In one aspect, he was academic person, very intelligent, intellectual, democrat uh, person. And uh, I was very happy that we have in Afghanistan a president. He is graduated from uh, US uh, universities and he taught, uh, he was teaching there and uh, he worked in big institutions like UN or World Bank like that. And uh, his knowledge, his uh, general information was really uh, large about many things. He had idea about the Roman Empire, about anthropology of Afghanistan, about uh, what is happening, going on in uh, Western countries. So I was happy that we have a leader like that in this level of the knowledge. But in another aspect, he was not familiar with Afghan uh, culture uh, practically. He didn't, uh, even his uh, speech in, in Farsi and Pashto was weak. And we were correcting many times his speeches, um, changing the words, the terminology to be easier for him to pronounce. Right, right. And yeah, he was all the time, all, uh, he was uh, thinking in English. And when he was speaking English, we were really relaxed mm. because he was really uh, good in uh, English speaking. But when he, he was uh, talking in Farsi or um, uh, Pashto, uh, we were feeling really uh, nervous. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> when he was making uh, some big mistakes and giving his uh, uh, competitors chance to make propaganda against him, but it was not a big problem. Uh, the big problem was that uh, he uh, was trusting some people were not uh, trustworthy people. The people were praising him and uh, talking as he was, uh, he liked. Uh, he was trusting them more and gradually a, a small circle uh, mm, around him mm, took kind of control on his uh, mind or giving him uh, advices and uh, making him away from other uh, politicians and from other many people. As I told him sometimes you have to have mm, mm, better uh, relationship with uh, politicians in Afghanistan. And he uh, was saying, uh, I respect them, but uh, I don't trust them, and they uh, want some benefits and some advantage, and I don't give them advantage. I told him one time that Afghan people, uh, I know their psychology, uh, they are not looking for money or materials all the time. Uh, they need uh, respect. They need good uh, dealing, good behavior. When you respect a person, uh, he would be enough for him, especially who are very famous and they have um, long-term background in Afghanistan as leaders for two decades, three decades, four decades. They were uh, working as politicians in Afghanistan. You have to deal with them. They are the realities of Afghanistan. They are representing other ethnicities. Uh, uh, we have to deal with them, not dealing illegally, but dealing politically, diplomatically like that. Uh, but no. Uh, his uh, position was uh, not listening to this kind of advices. The reason why I ask you about his character is because a lot has been said about the way he left or fled the country. Um, you know, again, we cannot confirm the validity of, I don't know if it's a rumor or not, but people saw him living with, you know, cars full of cash. Um, you know, that's been said by the Russian, uh, you know, media. Uh, outlet. So, you know, um, is he the kind of person who would just flee the country? Because his his reasoning, uh, I think we recently listened to his speech, and he said that that was to avoid further bloodshed. What's your response to that statement? That would there have been, had he been captured, what would have happened to him? Had he stayed? Uh, no, uh, I don't uh, agree 
that uh, if he was continuing, it was Balaj. Uh, it was better than uh, escaping from Afghanistan to stay. He had many uh, chances to make peace with other people, with other politicians, and he burned many chances. Uh, he uh, made tricks for other uh, politicians. When uh, in Herat, in uh, Mazar Sharif, in some other places, the people is, started to uh, resist against the Taliban. He went there, he ensured them that the government is with you against the Taliban. But he was asking the generals, the commanders of the army that don't support them. He was telling them that I will support you, but asking the army don't support them. So um, he made many tricks to defeat them uh, um, indirectly. And uh, um, uh, he, if he was true to support them, uh, he was able, and many people were uh, against the Taliban as the army and, uh, uh, was uh, fighting the Taliban. Why would he say that though? Why would he uh, say that we support you and tell his uh, army generals like just you know don't don't bother fighting the Taliban? Like why would he do that? It is it still is a big question. Many people still are confused why he was doing like that. I, for me, it was. Uh, I was not sure. I was daily uh, in daily co communication with many people in Afghanistan, in Herat, in Kabul, in the palace, and the na national advisor uh, office. And I was saying that we have we have army, we have police, we have intelligence service. Right. We have also uh, we, uh, we 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 had the best uh, commanders in in the region. Uh, our uh, special forces were like uh, U.S. special forces, and the Taliban were not able to defeat them. Yeah, they needed equipment, they needed logistic uh, support, but their ability, their uh, experience, and their uh, training was really um, in high quality. So um, it was a um, uh, wealth for Afghanistan. It, other chance for the government was the other groups who were against the Taliban. They joined the government. They were in uh, common ground against the Taliban. They were like a backup for the army. And uh, army was able to continue for six months, one year, two years. Even uh, there was not support by the NATO or other uh, organizations. But he changed uh, all the Mm, uh, situation uh, suddenly uh, we didn't expect that we didn't know how and uh, even the day he left Kabul uh, I talked with some people uh, two hours before leaving Kabul he talked with his uh, vice president uh, his deputy and some other people say go to your offices continue your uh, task your work I'm here I'm going to the defense ministry to check the situation. And like that, he ensured all of them. But suddenly, he left Afghanistan without telling them that no defense minister uh, knew about that, no uh, his deputies, yeah. no other uh, authorities. So it was very questionable for any people, for me, for any other people, why uh, it is not a uh, leadership uh, manner. A leader is not doing like that with his nation and with his people, with his country. Do you think that was the reason because now the, the, the leader is missing in action uh, that the military, I mean, the Afghan for government forces with all these high, super high technology and years of training, they, is that why they just kind of gave up? and they didn't even bother resisting the Taliban? I'm not sure, but uh, as I talked with some people inside the government or outside of the government that said uh, when there was some rumors or some uh, speeches, non-official speeches uh, among the politicians that a solution for Afghanistan is to change the structure of the system from centralist system to non-centralist or like federal system or maybe semi-independency for some places in Afghanistan or so something like that. He became 
uh, afraid if the, his ethnicity will lose the power. And uh, because some people in the US also, when they studied Afghanistan complicity, they said one ethnicity can't rule off the country and take control and suppress the others. It is the reason of the crisis. We have to give chance for other ethnicities. When this idea was supported by the Western countries, it was a way to uh, solve the problem, the internal problem. And the, Dr. Ghani, as I heard from the politicians, when Dr. Ghani uh, figured out that uh, this idea should be or could be supported by the Western uh, governments, uh, his ethnicity will lose the, uh, a strong power. So he changed the situation <clears throat> to all uh, other ethnicities, uh, the com commanders, the leaders were defeated and Taliban uh, majority are from one ethnicity. So they took all uh, country and they are able to suppress all ethnicities in Afghanistan. Is there any chance for President Ghani to make a comeback? Do you ever see, he coming, see him coming back to the country? If he comes not coming as a leader, uh, the Taliban are not uh, liking him and the Taliban don't trust him. Even he was supporting Taliban in the uh, 80s. Uh, he was, uh, he and uh, Khalil Zad and some other people from the same ethnicity, uh, they were um, lobbying for the Taliban in the in, in 90s in the US. And they were talking on BBC and some other media that Taliban uh, has right that they are uh, correcting themselves and don't be afraid of them like that. Uh, but the Taliban didn't trust this level, level of uh, politicians. They uh, believe they are competitors on leadership. There's a big competition inside the ethnicity on the leadership who is representing the ethnicity. So Taliban um, claim we are the true uh, representative of our ethnicity. The technocrats who came from Western countries into Afghanistan, like, like Dr. Ghani or Khalilzad, they believe they are uh, the uh, genuine uh, representative of their ethnicity. This conflict still is not solved, not uh, finished yet. So uh, Taliban didn't uh, trust them. The, don't trust them uh, still uh, in the uh, future also I don't believe they trust Karzai or Dr. Ghani or uh, Khalilzad or others. Um, uh, maybe for some, if was some pressure on Taliban, they allow them to live in Kabul uh, symbolically in some uh, position, but don't want them to give them power and authority in their government.